Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. You're looking at the 30-minute chart of silver from netdania.com. And uh, the big question, of course, is going to be, um, is this rally going to be smacked down like the others before it? Or is, are we going to get a slow, steady rise and an explosion like we did in 2010? Now, you can see that they made a move, apparently, uh, with this volume spike above 3 million, whatever they are, contracts, I suppose. Uh, and you had a dollar move in the price of silver. Now, one thing to notice is that the, the uh, size of these uh, candlesticks is much, much larger than it was in the past. So we're getting a range expansion. Range expansion just means that the relative distance the price moves in, in a given period of time, it, it gets larger. And that goes with, goes with a bull market. It, a rising market is going to see range expansion as it, as it rises, uh, uh, going from a steady rise and then ultimately a, a spike as we had in 2010. Now, the question is, is this intervention, we'll call it, enough to stop this current bull move? I personally believe that there's going to have to be some serious follow through and considering that it's the weekend and there is no trading until Sunday night, it's probably going to have to follow through on Sunday night. Interesting that we're close to the May 1st uh, date, which was the anniversary, it'd be a five year anniversary of the uh, fake Obama birth certificate and the fake Bin Laden capture and the rigged margin increases overnight, uh, multiple margin increases that uh, marked the date of the original SmackDown. Let's actually pull that up here. Uh, we'll pull it up with the weekly. And that's going to be May 1st right there. May Day for silver. Now, uh, looking at this long-term chart, there's a couple of things you want to notice. The, the volume here, it, it's breakout on the biggest volume ever. Certainly, uh, it's the highest here with this spike, but it also, as far as the thickness, it's, it's a lot more volume on this, on this rise than anything we've gotten in the past. The, also, uh, the other thing that's very important is that this uh, MACD is crossing over here on the weekly. And uh, although the monthly has a long, long way to go, you can see that uh, a weekly crossover on the MACD, the last time we had this sort of rise, and I pointed out that we had a slow rise and then a very rapid rise during the last bull phase of this bull market. And uh, that coincided with a breakout of the MACD on the weekly chart above the zero line and it pretty much stayed above that line. Uh, it had corrections but uh, it never corrected back below the zero line and then ultimately it peaked in this huge spike here. So are we coming towards something like that? Well we might but the powers that be might have a trick uh, that they might pull out of their bag of tricks. So currently the trend line is intact. Now, it's probably going to take more volume than it took here to get down below this trend line. And uh, that can happen, and of course, that's going to be when you stack. You always stack on massive drops. Uh, silver, regardless of whether it's in a bull market, a sideways market, a bear market, there are always massive drops, and that's when you stack, uh, stack especially if you're dealing with hedged sellers such as Atmex, uh, Gainesville, to, to a certain extent, Jam Bullion and, and Provident. Th those are the ones that I watch carefully and I see the prices change on them. It doesn't mean they have to in the future, so you have to watch that. Um, you have to take note because sometimes the prices don't really move. And we're going to look at some two-ounce coins here in a bit. And some of those get to the point where they're so far above spot that they really don't move anymore. They've really gone from being even a numismatic to collectible art, we'll say. So that's what we're looking at. Uh, notice how low the MACD is here 
on this 30 minute chart, you can see that this reset here um, only is second only to this reset right there. And you can see that that one was accompanied by the, the move. So are we going to get another move up? It's going to be very interesting to watch this MACD. Uh, the, it's probably all going to go down on Sunday night. So that's what we're going to be watching. Uh, we may get a huge rally up to that 18 level. And again, I pointed out the congestion points here. You can see that we're in the process of passing through most of this congestion. And a solid rally is going to take us up to the beginning of the congestion. And the next level is 18 all the way up to 22. So let's look at some stories here. Now, here's the first one from SRS Rocco on Silver Doctors and he's asking why are the Chinese stockpiling silver big price move coming it looks like something big may happen to the silver market and the Chinese are preparing for it after China launched its new yuan gold fix today the prices of the precious metal surged at one point today silver was up five percent Silver is now trading past 1720, a price not seen in over a year. Even though gold has taken center stage today due to Chinese rolling out their new yuan gold fix, something quite interesting has been taking place in the silver market over the past six months. While COMEX silver inventories have been declining from a peak of 184 million ounces in July of 2015 to 154 million ounces today, Silver stocks at the Shanghai Futures Exchange have been doing the exact opposite and in a big way. And you can see the chart here. This is a chart of the silver stocks on the Shanghai Futures Exchange. And, and you can see that it's a move from a low of 233. It's almost a tenfold move. It wouldn't surprise me uh, to see a tenfold move. Now, I talked before about arbitrage between the two markets. And... Uh, as Jennifer pointed out in one of her comments, the, the arbitrage uh, in China, if it's silver and gold, then the, they're going to be um, selling the silver and gold in China for a higher price and then arbitraging that by buying it and then it's going to have to be shipped over there. Now there's a number of ways of preventing that from occurring that's assuming that we have truly legitimate and liquid uh, markets and that's a big assumption but assuming that we have those things then an arbitrage where they sell uh, the silver in in china and buy it in london for example then that means that to complete the arbitrage they have to ship it to china now what can they do to prevent that from happening? Well, one of the biggest things they can do to prevent that from happening is to allow the silver price in the West to rise faster than it rises in the East. As long as the silver price in the West stays ahead of the silver price in the East, then the arbitrage goes the other way. So if we're showing a price of $17 in, in the West, in the LBMA and the COMEX, and they're only showing $16 in China, then the arbitrage effect will be to actually have physical shipped from there to here. Now, I don't think it's going to go that way. And I don't think the powers that be that are trying to stop this, this move from happening think it's going to go that way either. Uh, the Chinese apparently are showing intent to start stacking silver. Um, as I'll show you with the next article here, it's not really plausible if you think about it but uh, it's starting to move that way and people have commented on zero hedge and other places that the chinese are very long-term thinking and very slow moving so their plans go out decades and even centuries it's kind of hard to comprehend but that's kind of the way the illuminati works that's kind of the way the chinese work so I think the Chinese are looking at the long term, but they're definitely kind of dipping their foot into the silver thing. Now, how far can they dip their foot into it? Well, I've covered this many, many times. Uh, it's not something that you can really feasibly do because of the numbers are so skewed. So this is uh, just, we're just going to look at the billionaires. Now, if you looked at millionaires, there's 
a huge number of them as well. But when we look at billionaires, uh, we can see, first of all, the top list here is the list of countries with 10 or more billionaires in 2015. And uh, you can see that China's right there at number two, but you have to remember that you have to include Hong Kong, and some would even include some of the other Asian nations, maybe Taiwan, for example, uh, which comes in as number 12 on this list. Probably a better comparison would be this uh, list down here that shows uh, the number of billionaires per uh, region. And so you can see here, Africa is basically irrelevant with only 29 billionaires. Asia comes in with 578 billionaires. Europe comes in with 514 billionaires. And North America comes in with 591. Uh, kind of an Orwellian thing, really. Think about it uh, with the, the three major competing regions. I don't remember what they were, Asia, East Asia, Eurasia, whatever they were. But uh, you've got these rival powers here. So Asia is rapidly gaining on the West. It hasn't made it there yet, but uh, it, it's, uh, it's moving very, very quickly. So the question is, when we look at these billionaires here and the total... If we go down to the very bottom, you can see the total billionaires. Um, I think it was on the previous chart. Uh, but it's actually around, I think it was 1,800. This is the list of Chinese billionaires. Uh, I think it's around 2,000 billionaires. But I did the math. I'm not going to take you through the math here. One thing to note, though, with the list of Chinese uh, by net worth, you can see here that uh, just as a comparison, in 2015, 1 through 5 in China is 24 billion through 15 billion. Go back to the last uh, one they list here, 2011, 1 through 5 is 9 billion through 6 billion. So you can see that the number of billionaires and the amount that they're worth has really increased during the last four years in China. But if you do the math, uh, compile all the billionaires and uh, look at the entire world, I think it's around 2,000. Uh, I did a calculation based on what the average would be and how much money they control. I think the number was close to around 10 trillion. And if you take a number of, say, 1% and imagine that that money actually went into physical silver, not uh, not paper silver, but actual physical silver, real wealth, uh, if just 1% of the billionaire's money in the world went into physical silver, I think uh, the figure was, you'll have to do your own calculations, but the figure for me came up to be 93 years worth of all the silver mined in the world would be taken up. A century of silver, it, it would take a century of silver uh, mining at, at uh, the current mining rate of 1 billion ounces a year to, to satisfy the billionaires of the world to have 1% of their wealth in silver. So obviously that's not going to happen because, as I've said many times, the billionaires can't play this game. This is the little guy's game. So what game do the billionaires play? Well, the game that the billionaires are allowed to play is the paper game. That's the game that the central banks control and the governments control, and they can basically take that wealth. They can uh, arrest the billionaire. They can seize their company. They can seize their assets. Uh, they can't seize physical gold and silver nearly as easily. But uh, the question that I want to pose here is... What happens if they reset the system? And I think the answer is pretty clear here. It's going to be riots. And really, the people with the most to lose are going to be the billionaires. Um, but there's going to be a lot of other people who are dependent upon pensions and promises. And really, if you think about it, uh, the basic reason, I mean, you have to ask yourself, why do people riot? Uh, for example, uh, just take myself as an example. What's going to cause me to go to my downtown area or go to some meeting area and riot and protest? Uh, wouldn't you say that the only thing that would cause me to do that would be some either 
uh, moral outrage at something that had happened or even more importantly, somebody stealing from me. In other words, somebody coming and taking a large percentage of my wealth with no recourse, basic theft, whether it's the seizure of my bank account, the seizure of my retirement, uh, making my currency worthless so that I can hardly survive. Those are the types of things that cause riots. Now, I've already shown you that the billionaires cannot have their money in real wealth because there just is too much money and not enough real wealth out there. So it's very interesting that we see the powers that be preparing for riots. And you can see this is a training exercise in Texas for where they're getting ready for riots. And again, why are there going to be riots? Uh, you have to ask yourself that question. And you have to ask yourself this question. Is there anything that would cause you to riot? Um, and if the answer is yes, then... You, the path that you need to follow is very, very clear. If there's anything that would cause you to riot, then you need to get rid of it because uh, you're not going to win if you're out there rioting. So they're, they're getting ready for riots. And obviously, uh, to me, the reason is going to be that they're going to take people's wealth. And the wealth they're going to take is a promise. A promise is going to be broken. That's why they're planning for riots, because they know the promises can't be kept. So um, our job is to make sure that we don't have any promises owed to us, that everything that we expect and everything that we own is, our, is in our own hands and that we're in control of it. So let's go and look at those two ounce coins. I wanted to talk about those because some people have talked about this two ounce monkey and uh, what I did here is a breakdown of the two ounce coins and uh, just the two ounce coins, nothing else based on prices low to high. And people have commented on how unusually difficult it is to get this, this two ounce lunar monkey this year. And it is. It, it's been very sparse. And this is really the first time I would say that we've seen a premium build in to the two ounce. Now, we don't have it quite built into the half ounce yet, and that's going to kind of tip the hand that you probably want to lean towards the two ounce if you can get them real cheap. Because uh, we, we saw early on with the one ounce lunar series that uh, 2012 was the year that that started when they tried to release those at $99, the one ounce uh, dragons. And that's when a large number of us started moving into the half ounce and two ounce coins. Now what we're seeing here in these two ounce lunars, we're actually seeing a premium built into the two ounce. This is the first year to see this. I've purchased two ounce coins since um, 2012. And uh, the most I pay for any two ounce coins is $64 a coin, which equates to $32 an ounce. I believe I paid that for some of my uh, dragon coins. And uh, by the way, uh, the dragon coin here at Atmex is down here at $101. Um, now, again, people are going to say, well, yeah, but that's not what people will pay you for the coin. That's what uh, they're selling it for. Well, but the fact that they're selling it for that also is indicative that they believe people are willing to pay that and, in fact, are paying that. Uh, because they're not going to hold a coin on here that doesn't sell at all. They're going to keep it at a price where it sells. So the fact of the matter is some people are paying $101 for that 2-ounce Year of the Dragon. That's my highest pay, uh, price I've ever paid for silver, uh, around $32 an ounce. And I'm still sitting, if if this is what some people are willing to buy it for, if we're going to value it at that, uh, at, a, at a decent gain in a falling market. So... I'm going to stand by my belief in these lunars. But uh, with the two ounce here, kind of strange. If we go all the way to the bottom, you can see uh, one that you wouldn't really expect. And that makes sense here with the rarity. And I don't know how many were produced. I'm not going to pull up the Perth figures here. But you can see the Lunar Series 2, two ounce, 2009, Year of the Ox, two ounce coin, they're asking $259, uh, $260 a coin for this coin. And apparently getting it. So 
uh, that's the the potential. Now, obviously, when you've got silver trading at about seventeen dollars an ounce, so the equivalent spot price for a two ounce coin is going to be roughly thirty four dollars, and you've got a coin here trading at two hundred sixty dollars. You're not talking about a numismatic coin, uh, a semi numismatic coin anymore. Uh, you're talking about a collector coin. You're talking about straight numismatics. Uh, you're talking about artwork, etc. Not even bullion. So that's very encouraging uh, that all of the two ounce pr prices are high, uh, holding up very strongly. I don't like fifty four dollars for the for for this uh, monkey, but I do like the fact that the premiums are starting to build on the two ounce coins. So back to the silver chart, uh, the big question is going to be whether or not they're going to follow up the smackdown. And I personally believe it's going to take massive volume, probably on Sunday night, to get down below. The first key trend line is going to be here at $16.80. The next one is going to be about $16.50 uh, to see if they're really serious, if they're really willing to put out the money or as I suspect, I'm going to say I believe there's about an 80% chance this rally is going to continue because I think that what they're going to do is try to stanch the flow of physical to Asia. And the way they do that is to keep the silver price in the West rising faster than the silver price in the East. So that's everything for silver. Now, for those of you who are not into conspiracy theories and uh, all kinds of craziness, go ahead and tune out now. I'm going to finish up with a video from uh, a YouTube user. I'm not gonna use her name because she's basically a nutcase. But I, I did wanna show you this video here of just the absolute strangeness that's going on in our world. And uh, this is a picture of the 2015 cheerleaders. Let's listen to it and I'm gonna comment. 2015 Denver Bronco cheerleaders. Look at all the square jaws. Look at all the square shoulders. Look at all the masculine abs. And look at all the straight line coming down uh, with no hourglass female form. Now, I would say here that whether or not you believe there's some kind of transgender agenda. Now, I personally am 100% convinced that there is a satanic transgender agenda. And the purpose of it is to confuse people between what a man looks like and what a woman looks like. But even if you don't believe that that's true, you have to ask yourself, why the freak show? Because when you look at these girls, we'll say, look, look here, you see this one? Look at the jaws are wider on the bottom than the top. Look at this girl. Look at this girl. Look at this girl. Even if you don't believe that, look up here. Look at their faces individually. Why? These are some of the ugliest girls I've ever seen in my life. Why are they doing this? Now, you could probably go and look for high school cheerleaders or something. They're probably not going to be freaks like this. This seems to be something that's going on in the NFL. Look at this one up here. That looks like a man. Um, I'm sorry, but that looks like a man. This one here on the end, that's a man. This one here on the end, that's a man. What are they doing? Well, I don't know what they're doing. I, the only thing I can tell you is that there is a big agenda and it has to do with confusing the difference between men and women. And it's shocking. It tells you that it's very late. And we'll talk to you next time.